In regards to what Borussia Dortmund can do, they are going to cause problems. Difficult place to go. I actually see a home win here. We've got Atletico beating uh, Dortmund. PSG for me would then be in third and Dortmund in fourth. Atletico <laughs> Dortmund, Atletico! <laughs> At the beginning of the 2023-24 Champions League campaign, there was almost not a soul I thought Borussia Dortmund would progress even further than the group stage. But now they have shocked the entire world, doing what was deemed completely impossible just a few months ago. With the odds stacked against them, they pushed for one last dance in Europe. But money fans don't know the true story of how they managed to make it so far. So in this video, I'll debunk it all. After fighting hard for a Bundesliga title last season, Dortmund finished second in the league which saw them go into pot two, which wasn't ideal because the possibility of them getting pitted against some of the strongest teams in the world was pretty high. This was the eighth year in a row Dortmund found themselves in the Champions League, so fans were crossing their fingers for an easy group. Only that wouldn't be the case. Paris Saint-Germain, AC Milan, Newcastle United. Borussia Dortmund were put in the group of death and there's no arguing that. AC Milan had narrowly missed out on the Supercoppa last year and were pushing for the Scudetto in Serie A. So this team could be a potential threat and knock a Dortmund out in the early stages. Newcastle would be a different story in which they were an excellent team last year under Eddie Howe and were even runners up in the Carabao Cup. But Newcastle hadn't been in the Champions League since 2002, so it was really up in the air whether this team was a one season wonder or not. Last but not least there was PSG, one of the most deadly teams in all of the tournament and they had been missing out on the Champions League trophy for years. They had arguably the most star studded team in Europe, so defeating Paris Saint Germain would be a real task. But to truly understand the position Dortmund were put in, allow me to outline it a bit. At the time of the first match day for the group stage, Dortmund were sitting in 6th place in the Bundesliga and weren't looking too good in the cup competitions. Their squad market value was ranked 13th highest in the tournament and they didn't really have any crazy star players like the other teams. Overall, their team was not labeled as contenders for being champions of Europe. However, that would change later on. Dortmund first played PSG in what would be the match that would set the tone for the remainder of the group stage. From the first whistle, Dortmund were getting some chances, not clear cut ones but Donnarumma was being put to the test. But Dortmund were weak in the back and PSG were getting several shots on goal and getting scarily close to scoring the first goal of the match. PSG continued to press Dortmund and soon enough Mbappe would receive the ball in the box and Nicolas Soule would attempt to tackle but handball it instead. And PSG would get a penalty and Mbappe was not going to miss from the spot here. Dortmund's spirits must have been crushed as it wasn't long before Hakimi would get the ball in the box and weave his way through the defense to double Paris' lead. Despite having a handful of chances, Dortmund failed to convert any of them and lost their first group stage match 2-0. Even though this was a huge three points to drop at the start of the campaign, Dortmund had bigger problems to worry about in the form of AC Milan. They gotta take them on first and signal at Duna Park, and if you don't know the atmosphere there, it's insane to say the least. Although this match was tipped to be a close one, both sides had their chances but Dortmund seemed to be dominating most of the time, and had 18 total shots with 1 expected goals. The match ended nil-nil, and overall, Dortmund were in a tricky spot on the table. As they moved forward to the next match, they played Newcastle for the first time and odds were in Dortmund's favor. Dortmund were able to control the match from the first whistle and finally made their first breakthrough at the end of the first half with Nemeka finding the back of the net. For the rest of the match, Newcastle were on the forefront and Dortmund were stuck defending. It ended 1-0, which was huge for Dortmund, but it could have gone either way. As they rolled to the second installment of the group stage fixtures, Dortmund were sitting third place tied with Newcastle on points. And as they came into facing Newcastle again, Dortmund really turned up the heat this time. When Newcastle arrived at the yellow wall, they stood no chance whatsoever. As the game began, it was clear that Newcastle were struggling to play their brand of football, and halfway through the first half, Dortmund got their first breakthrough, with Fulkrug making it one. Although the match was a bit back and forth, Dortmund were playing great defensively and in the 76th minute had Julian Brandt make it 2-0, effectively sealing the win for the team. Next was Milan and the atmosphere was completely different this time around. The game was already one-sided in the first 10 minutes with Marco Royce converting from the spot, however 20 minutes later we saw Milan make it level, and then we had a game on our hands. In the second half, Dortmund very much took control and were able to score two more goals in the span of 10 minutes, with Adeyemi finishing the last one making it 3-1 for Dortmund. As they headed into the final match of the group stage, they needed to take a win. This match was equally as valuable for PSG, so both teams were clashing heads from the start. This time, Dortmund welcomed them into the home stadium, which was a huge advantage for them since PSG had controlled the game for the most part. The first half was back and forth, yet Dortmund would make it 1-0 in the 51st minute, and just listen to the crowd. But five minutes later, Zara Emery would make the score even, and PSG had the momentum from there. Several chances later, and no breakthroughs, the match ended in a draw, which saw Dortmund top their group. An unexpected winner of the hardest group in the tournament, and they would head into the round of 16. Borussia Dortmund. Facing PSV Eindhoven. PSV were another team like Dortmund that were severely underestimated in their ability in the Champions League. Their group was a walk in the park compared to Dortmund, their toughest opponent in the group stage was Arsenal, in which they were able to hold their own in their second meeting, so this matchup was going to be an interesting one. The first leg took place in the Philips Stadion, and the atmosphere was tense. As kickoff was blown, Dortmund were playing their game, and they had no problem breaking down PSV and breaking the deadlock in the 24th minute. 
with Daniel Malin getting on the score sheet. However, the rest of the game was dominated by PSV. They were peppering Mayer and causing problems in front of goal, and in the 56th minute, Hummels tried to slide it in the box, but it backfired with PSV receiving a penalty. And Luke de Jong converted it with no issues. The rest of the game was difficult for Dortmund. Malin was playing phenomenally, but he couldn't bag another goal. And so the first leg ended square. The second leg in front of the yellow wall, with over 80,000 in attendance, Dortmund would have a match on their hands. It was early on that Dortmund were able to take the lead with Jane Sancho scoring his first goal in more than a year of football, and Dortmund took control from there. PSV were struggling to play their brand of football, and were being consumed by the yellow wall. Although things started to take a turn in the second half and PSV would gain back some of their footing, Koba was able to keep the ball out of the net, and in the 90th plus 5, Royce was able to seal the win for them. They moved on into the quarterfinals in fantastic fashion and would face off against Atletico Madrid, who topped their group and defeated one of the tournament favorites Inter Milan in a shocking result. The pressure behind this match was immense, and it wasn't looking favorable for Dortmund. The first leg was at the Metropolitano. And if you're a football fan, you know that this is a brutal stadium to play in. The odds were in Atletico's favor, and from the start of the match, it looked to be that way. They scored in the fourth minute, and that made the atmosphere even worse for Dortmund. They continued to be dominated in the first half, and Atletico doubled their lead in the 32nd minute, and it looked impossible for Dortmund to come back from this one. Griezmann was having one hell of a game, but Dortmund took control of the second half. Chance after chance, nothing seemed to be clicking. In the 81st minute, Haller was able to finish one off, and a comeback was on for about 10 minutes, and then the match ended 2-1. Not the best start, but definitely not too far to come back from. The second leg would be a battle. Dortmund were at home, and the first half was all yellow. They were creating chances and playing some beautiful football and eventually would score two goals in the last 10 minutes of the first half, and went into halftime with high spirits. But Atletico were not going to give up that easy, and came out of the gates flying. They had a positive start early on, and in the 49th minute, Hummels would concede an own goal, and brought it level on aggregate. Madrid had several chances after, and Correa would score another to put them in front. It was looking to be a disaster at Signal Iduna Park for Borussia Dortmund. However, Fulkrug would come as a saving grace, and brought the match to a tie. To only have Sabitzer five minutes later, score again to give them the lead. An absolute fairy tale for Dortmund. They conquered Atletico and would move on into the semis where they would play against PSG once again. As you probably remember, Dortmund had a very hard time against PSG. So again, Dortmund were doubted from the very start. How do I see this one going? I'm gonna go for a 1-1 draw. I think that Dortmund won't be able to deal with the attack that Mbappe and Dembele are gonna present. It has to be PSG and not because- PSG were dominating the match up front and didn't give Dortmund any breathing room. They were creating loads of chances and it looked like PSG would stop Dortmund's Champions League campaign. But Paris were never actually able to put the ball in the back of the net. In the 36th minute, Dortmund bounced back and scored the first goal of the match to put them up 1-0. PSG did much of the same thing, chance after chance, they failed to score and everyone was on the edge of their seat. However, the match ended 1-0 for Dortmund. The second leg took place at the Parc des Princes, and the pressure was on for Dortmund to make it to their first UCL final in over 10 years. From the first minute of the match, Dortmund were put on the defensive. PSG applying some extremely dense pressure and further stacked the odds against Dortmund. The first half was just filled with PSG trying to score, and it's a miracle that the first half contained no goals. There was a short stint after halftime that Dortmund were able to pull together a decent attack, and in the 50th minute, Mats Hummels were able to bury one and put Dortmund in the lead once again. PSG continued to fire shots like crazy. They had 30 shots in the whole game and like 70% possession. And despite all of this, they still couldn't manage to score any goals. They struck the woodwork four times, and before they knew it, it was the full-time whistle. Dortmund had gotten into their first UCL final in 10 years, making history, and the celebrations ensued. With a sold-out Wembley Stadium, the UCL final had begun. Real Madrid played their signature possession playstyle, but Dortmund made the most of it when they had the ball. Adjami and Fulkrug were given some great chances, but they failed to convert. The Dortmund's counterattack game was insane, and they were getting so close. The first half ended in a deadlock, but Real Madrid came out swinging in the second half. Chance after chance, they edged closer to taking the lead, and it would finally click when Carvajal would score a header off of a cruise corner. And 10 minutes later, Ian Matson had a shocking pass back, and it was intercepted by Bellingham, to where he would play it to Vinny and he would slot it away sealing Real Madrid's 15th Champions League title. Dortmund had defied all the odds, and in the end, it just wasn't enough for them. And that after this video. I'll see you guys next week.